Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today we are going to take a look at the topic, what is the universe saving for you? And I thought that would be a really nice topic to do. Today we have got crystals, we've got objects, we've got a jar full of quotes. I put this together on the weekend. Don't know if it's going to focus. There we go. So that is all good and ready to go. We've got our objects here. I've got myself a lovely little festive hot chocolate from good old Cafe Nero. I'm so proud of myself. I've only been to Cafe Nero a handful of times this year. I have been going to my, there's another local little coffee shop near me and I've actually been going there as opposed to Cafe Nero this year. So that has been something different. Uh, last night I was listening to Ram Das. I thought the topic was going to be something around addiction because he's got a great lecture on addiction. I was listening to that. But then today I changed the topic. I thought, no, let, we all need something positive on the horizon. We all need something fun and positive. And, you know, what is the universe saving for us? And I like this concept because it's like there is, there's always good stuff on the horizon that we are making our way to and that's going to come in and all that. And I just thought, I think let's take a look at that. So for group number one, your crystal object today is, now hopefully it's going to focus. It was having trouble focusing earlier. Your crystal is Labradorite. Oh, I just want to focus. Come on. There we go. It's quite focused. Isn't that beautiful? It's a really lovely stone. So hopefully you can see that. You can see the shine on that at different angles. I mean, it kind of looks a bit plain, but then at certain angles, it's just incredible. So look at all that light. It's really great. So Labradorite. Okay, that's group one. It's good for psychic travels, I think, and that kind of thing. Uh, group number two, you could be going for, now apologies, you can see my thumbprints on that. I'm wearing moisturizer. Um, group number two has got this beautiful tiger's eye. Really pretty stone that. So that's group number two. Or group number three is this little object here. It is four leaf clover. A little bit of good luck there. So feel free to choose your group and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one or this Labradorite stone, then you are in the right place. There we go, that is focusing. All right, so well, we've got something a little bit psychic going on here already <laughs> uh, with this kind of stone. It's good for, I don't know, psychic travel, dreaming, all that kind of thing. But let's see, what is the universe saving for you? What is the universe saving for you? What's on the horizon? What's coming in? This is something really good, really positive, really, really nice. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, we'll take one of these. What is the universe saving for you? Take one of these. This is a new deck, the Lorenzi Tarot. Really love the illustrations on this. Actually, we might put that there, put that one after. And one of these is the Vedic Astrology deck. There we go. All right, let's see. What is the universe saving for you? Ghost lands. All right, number 17. Interesting. It's 
Six of Pentacles. It's a very interesting looking Six of Pentacles. Bee, you've been a busy bee. Six of Pentacles. Nice. Oh wow, Two of Cups, beautiful. Okay. And Saturn in the eighth house lives long. Yeah, definitely. Discontinuity with career, eyesight issues, has few children, taps occult secrets, philosophical separation from partner or siblings. Wow. Okay. Well, group number one it appears to me we've got ghost lands here and what i feel with this card is that it's like this good thing on the horizon which is some kind of two of cups type thing this has been a long time coming and i think uh six of pentacles i think six of pentacles typically is a card where it's about equal give and take and it's like you need to be in a life situation now where there is equal give and take and i think you need to be in a partnership where there's equal give and take and i think that is the thing that you, the universe is saving for you um, it's interesting that we've got here Saturn in the 8th house. It says here, separation from partner or siblings. Maybe you've been in separation with a partner while you've been moving through this, which could be considered like a no man's land. I know when I was going through a dark night of the soul type thing, yeah, for me it was like a no man's land and it was, you're isolated and you don't get to socialize and you don't really get friends and you don't really get to be with people and because your soul is transforming. So that's what a dark night of the soul is like. And it could be, gosh, it's interesting, the camera's kind of gone, the lighting's gone all dark here too. Um, that's better. Yeah, I think this ghost lands thing, I think you've been in this phase for a while. But the universe has not forgotten about you at all. The universe has, has saved someone special for you. So I think that's coming in. And it's like what you're due is equal give and take is this six of pentacles. Six of pentacles can also just be abundance. It can also be just money for all the hard work that you've been doing as well. Um, we've got this labradorite stone here, yeah. And I do think that this is, it's like you've been working hard on other planes, perhaps making progress on other planes, not the 3D material plane. You've been, it's because all your work, it's like, it's hidden. It's like, you, you've been, yes, you've been doing a huge amount of work, but it's like, I think you're yet to see the material rewards. And if this is not another person, this is all the love in your heart that will be reflected back to you in an equal way. That's really the thing that's being emphasized here, equal. There's like your due, equal give and take now, because you've probably been in unfair, unequal situations and that can't continue now. The universe wants something very different for you. So that's really good, group number one. I'm liking this reading, this is great. Let's see what we've got here in the jar. Take a couple of these. 
see what guidance comes through, what wisdom comes through from these. Okay, so the first one. Oh, wow. Life is like playing violin in public and learning the instrument as one goes on. Samuel Butler, yeah, I like that a lot. And I like this concept of kind of uh, life is like a performance. And I tend to think that. I tend to think like, so the more spiritual you become, the more you realize that all your ancestors are with you all the time and they're watching you and they're watching everything you do. And your ancestors, your angels, your guides, your team, for me, the planets, you know, the planets are my bosses at the moment. <laughs> like, I don't have a job with uh, human bosses, but the, the planets are certainly watching what I'm doing. So, and you know, I mean, the, the more spiritual you are and that you think that way, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, well, I, I suppose that happens, that's what happens when you're on your own a lot. You reach for other things, which is what I do. But we've got here, life is like playing a violin in public and learning the instrument as one goes on. I love this quote because like, we're always performing for the gods, you know, uh, or the stars or the planets. And I, I try to make my angels laugh in my head. And you know, that's always fun for me. If I don't have any anyone else to make laugh, I try to make my angels laugh. Is that gonna sit there? I hope so. Oh yeah, it does sit there. Cool. That's great. I got these little wooden bits just recently in the post. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, life is a succession of lessons which, much, which must be lived to be understood, Helen Keller. Life is a succession of lessons, yes, which must be lived to be understood. Yeah, there's no avoiding reality, there's no avoiding the living of life. And sometimes that's not always fun and that's not always easy. And I think this is definitely referring to your ghost lands time here. I think during this time, and that's very Saturn in the 8th as well, you've been transforming a huge amount. You've been changing a lot. When Saturn transits through the 8th, this is when people completely change career. This was when Saturn transited 8th from my moon. This is when I left advertising and I started doing this work that I do now. So that's an 8th from transit for Saturn. It's huge. And yeah, I am learning so many lessons. Uh, but the lessons go on, you know? We keep learning all the time. But I feel like you've been doing a huge amount of transformation. Group number one, well done to you. And I think there are some very good things coming on the horizon. So let me know how you got on with this reading and we are now going to welcome group number two so i'm just going to do this all as one cut guys i'm not gonna all as one video how about that for a change it makes it a lot easier to edit you know uh, all right so group number two if you chose group number two or this beautiful Beautiful, slightly smudged. <laughs> oh, tiger's eye, how wonderful is that? All right, let's see what's going on. Now, tiger's eye, this is very third chakra. This is third chakra. This is power. This is tiger's eye. It's very, it's a very strong, bold stone, actually. My friend, she, um, yeah, she does not like tiger's eye at all. She's just like, oh, I don't like tiger's eye. And it's interesting, she also, in her real actual life, she doesn't really like strong, bold people, yet she's always surrounded by them. She's always 
It's surrounded. Yeah, she once told me that I don't like tiger's eye. Isn't that interesting? All right, let's see what's in these cards. So, what is the universe saving for you? Group number two. What good is on the horizon? What is coming? Let's take a look. All right, go for that one. What's coming on the horizon for you? Oh, gentle gardener. Lovely. Well, definitely growth. Growth and abundance. I'm getting like a, like a job well done. Like you're, and even though here in the Northern Hemisphere we're heading into winter, but it's like growth is... Is, is coming okay like some, something's growing something's new oh fantastic the king of swords look at that look at this king of swords wow this is fascinating he's got eagle eagle eyes is that an eagle i'm gonna say it's an eagle he's got a little uh treble clef here like that's a little music symbol there okay he's got an open heart <laughs> but there's swords in us geez all right um flamingos well this is a very complicated king of swords okay let's get into this <laughs> let's see what this is oh beautiful look at that ten of cups wow Oh, I like this. This is fascinating. And what's going on in here? Oh, Jupiter in the 12th. Good, good. I like it. Group number two. I think the universe is saving a lot of things for you. Spends much time on spiritual growth. Potential for long distance relationship. Yeah. Debt or bankruptcy. Exposes secrets. Doesn't care for material things. Okay. And you've got this tiger's eye as well, which is all these strong, it was reminding me of strong, bold people, strong, bold characters. And that's really interesting because we've got him show up. King of Swords is not, he's not a, a very loving king. It's really interesting that, you know, I, I did notice, okay, he's, there's an open heart here, but like, Look at that. There's all these swords in there, which is kind of like thought energy. So he's a logical king, which is true. King of swords is a logical king. He's not a loving king. Hmm. I think group number two, you've been dealing with some tough characters in your life quite possibly but because of what a great job you have been doing I'm just going to put him down for a moment because of what a great job you are doing it's like all this abundance is due to come in for you all this this I think there's something and I think because you've been being gentle with these type of people in your life You've been, uh, I think you've been clearing out a lot of difficulties recently. And it's like you, you are due a ton of abundance and good stuff and just like whatever you want, like growth, abundance, ten of cups, the best kind of, let's focus on that, there we go, ten of cups, the best of the cups cards. This is total fulfillment. This is you know married kids the house but like whatever that is for you okay because as we grow and age and mature i think we determine what this is for us and maybe in our 20s we have the vision that it's married kids in the house which when i was in my early 20s yeah that's what i was 
hoping to aspiring to all that kind of thing but then you live life and well you know <laughs> what this picture is does change so but whatever the picture is for you of success and fulfillment with where you are now that is due to you that is coming in it's being saved for you the universe is saving this for you growth abundance in whatever way you need materially financially emotionally love jupiter in the 12th is absolutely beautiful this is spiritual growth this is spiritual growth but i think this is also reflective of you i think the gentle gardener is reflective of you i think the jupiter in the 12th is you because you've been dealing with these types of people in this jupiter in the 12th kind of a way because you've been doing a good job here i think the universe really wants to reward you with yeah a lot of abundance a lot of really good stuff and by the way people like this we need them in the world they are doing an important job uh, in their domain and you know yeah and i think intuitively you probably know a lot uh, about that these people are needed in the world too you know I just get a strong sense that you're doing a terrific job group two at handling challenging people in your world and so this beautiful scene here that's definitely on the horizon for you let's take a couple of quotes let's see what is going on in here this is good well done group number two this is great all right uh, oh this is great here yeah if you want to live a happy life tie it to a goal not to people or things albert einstein yes and i think that's what you've learned by being with tricky people in your life or difficult people in your life i think you're learning um these being around these kind of people are directing you back to you and who do i want to be how do i want to respond you know and when you look at you and you look at how do i want to respond and when i look at myself i go yeah how do i want to respond and i think well, i want to be wise you know yeah i want to be jupiter in the 12th or i want to be funny or i want to be light-hearted or mature about the whole thing or you know when i look at when i redirect my attention back to me and oh how do i want to be i do have ideas on how i want to be uh, and so if you're dealing with difficult people bring your attention back to yourself and how do you want to handle this situation the other thing is if you are as albert einstein is saying here if you want to live a happy life tie it to a goal not to people or things absolutely um so don't make with the ten of cups here don't make oh i really want to be married to xyz person to live a happy life no that that that's not it but like if your goal is something like i want to be a great partner to somebody one day uh, then that's going to work a lot better so that is what you want to do there for your goal let's take a look at the next one oh this is cool i like this the only impossible journey is the one you never begin anthony robbins yeah i like that So I think you're due to start a new beginning. Uh, and that new beginning is going to bring in a lot of abund abundance, is going to bring in a lot of happiness for you, and is going to be a place where you can be this really wise person. As I was saying, group two, something about, what did I say? I said something about you're going to be able to be this wise person. Absolutely. Uh, but it, yeah it's there's a journey for you to begin here like and like another chapter of the journey i think you are due to begin 
and, and all the work that you're doing is leading to this incredible picture that we see before us here. Group number two. This has been an awesome reading. Beautiful energy here. You are doing so well. I want to thank you for stopping by. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. And we are going to meet group number three. I'm going to put these away. And I'm also going to have a sip of my <laughs> chocolate as well, which is kind of at the end. So group number three, welcome. Hello. If you have a, something or other, you can have a sip as well. This is amazing, this hot chocolate. It's kind of, it's, I've got about a quarter of it left. Wow, it even tastes good a bit cold. <laughs> I really don't mind. I don't mind if drinks go cold. I've never had a problem with that. All right, let's take a look. My mum, she's not like that though. She's like, if it's not piping hot, I can't drink it. Okay. Group number, what are we doing here? Group number three. Let us see what is going on for you. All right, Page of Swords, we'll take it. We'll take one more though. Let's let you have a full shuffle because you didn't have a full shuffle just now. Don't tell the other groups that you're getting an extra card. Keep it, keep it, keep it our secret. Uh, we'll have one of these. What's on the horizon for you? No, it's just what's on the horizon for you. This is what is the universe saving for you? The universe is saving something. The universe is keeping something for you. The universe wants you to have good things, beautiful things, the best things in life. All right, let's take a look at all these. So what does the universe want? For you, oh my goodness, okay, the universe wants you to go to the dragon's lair. 19, that's a number one. That's a new beginning in what looks like a scary place. Okay, let's check that out. <laughs> this could be fun, guys. This could be something amazing. Let's not, let's not freak out here, okay. I'm freaking out a little bit, but anyway. All right, Page of Swords. Okay. Gosh, that is a very intricate Page of Swords. What's that? That looks like a map. An exposed heart. Gee, that's incredible. All right. Yeah, let's have a look what this is. The moon. Interesting. We really get to see what's under the water here. And it's really interesting for a moon card. Oh, I like that. Look at that. Up there it says, stay human. I don't know if that's going to focus <laughs> on this inflatable pig. How cute. Stay human. One of the things I love about this moon card, and we've got a number nine here, there's a lot of light in here. There's nothing dark or hidden. We can actually see absolutely everything. Wow, I like that. Okay. Let's see what's in here. All right, let's put that down. Let's go. Oh, Queen of Cups. All right, nice. Oh, Rahu in the 12th. Achieves foreign settlement, wealthy, may lack morals. Distant from mother. Gains wealth overseas, is wealthy. Overcomes enemies. Ambitious. Wow. And you've got the four leaf clover, which is traditionally like a symbol of luck, good luck. We could say lady luck. We've got queen of cups here. Wow, what a spread. Group number three. This is fascinating. God, I am going to need a sip of hot chocolate for this. All right, Dragon's Lair. And what is the universe saving for you? I think the universe is saving 
a huge amount of wealth and abundance. So firstly, like we've definitely got wealth and abundance coming into this Rahu in the 12th house. We've got the Queen of Cups. She is enormously loving. She's kind. She's generous. She's like everyone's mum, you know. She's very, very loving. Dragon's Lair. I think what the universe is saving for you is an adventure into the unknown. God, this is interesting. All right, well, I think this because... Now, this seems dangerous, right? This seems like a place that you, should, you really shouldn't be going in there. And if you do go in there, it's kind of like, well, you should have known it was a dragon because he told you he was a dragon, you know? But I feel like this is a thing of becoming more skillful. And I think what the universe is saving for you is heightened skill in the emotional world. It's like, and there is a kind of feeling of adventure here. There's, there's the, okay, what we've got here, we've got adventure with that dragon's lair. We don't know really what's in there. We've got the moon here, again, hidden energies. We've got Rahu in the 12th, again, hidden energies. But you have to go in there. Okay, Rahu, you have to go in. We've got hidden energies, but yet you can see. Look at how much light there is and you can see everything. So you can see everything. So I kind of feel like there's some kind of adventure that where you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a huge amount. And I think the learning is going to reinforce your queen status, number one. Because you have ventured, you have traveled, you have done a lot. You are a queen status. But it's like there's something you have to learn. And there's an adventure. And I do think, yeah, I think you have to go in. I think you've got to, because look at that Rahu in the 12th. That is Rahu. But you know, I would say this is Rahu in the 8th, the dragon's lair. But it's interesting because the dragon's lair, maybe that's sort of Rahu in the eighth going down, you know, but up here, what's that? And I think this is like a bit of an up here kind of thing because Rahu in the 12th, these are adventurers. These are, I'm thinking, um, you know, climbing Mount Everest. And this is that kind of image. So I think what the universe is saving for you is actually internal. Um, it's an internal gift, okay? Yes, it's an internal gift of like some kind of intuition or invincibility. But you have to use the external world to learn and to to come to own your own gifts. To, 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 to own this queen status kind of thing. Which you are there, but it's like maybe you haven't owned it. Yeah, wow. Interesting. Group number three. Wow, this has been something pretty cool. All right, well, got a bit, a bit of mis mysterious energies. But I also feel like with this here, I think you're protected and I think you're lucky. You're lucky and protected. And, and so I don't think, even though maybe you do have to encounter danger or something like that, um, you'll be protected. So nothing's going to harm you. And, 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 and harm and all that stuff is illusion anyway. But I know when you're in it and you're freaked out, 
that doesn't help. <laughs> Knowledge of that does not help because you're like, I'm too busy being terrified. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what's in here. This has been interesting, group number three. I'd love to know what's happening in your actual life. If anybody wants to share in the comments below. Let's take a couple of these. Wow. All right, let's see. We've got written here. Oh, what does it, is it gonna, is it gonna focus? Come on, there we go. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. <laughs> Will Rogers. Yeah, that's true. I don't quite see how that impacts you. All right, let's take a look at the next quote because that might be more obvious. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to impress people. Mm. Let's take a look at this one. Oh yeah, this applies. Try and focus it. A person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new, Albert Einstein. This is absolutely perfect here. This one, I do want to see why this is here. Why is this here? Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Maybe you have to encounter somebody who is... Maybe that's the dragon. <laughs> maybe, maybe this relates to the dragon. I don't know. All right. Well, let's just park that there for now. I mean, yeah, I'm not. I'm still not 100% clear on that. You see, they, these aren't going to sit here. I, I had a fantasy that they would, but it's it's just not working out. Let's just leave that. All right. Let's look at this one. This is great. A person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. Yeah, th this is it. It's like. You're up for some learning here, and it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be enjoyable, and I think it's going to be fun. And I think, do you know what? And there is a hint of fantasy in here as well. There's Rahu in the twelfth. Rahu in the twelfth is fantasy. It's dream. It's it's fun and freedom, and all is one. And yeah, it's all this beautiful stuff. So go go there, right? Just to go, go into this. Um, and there is something about ascension here. It's not about going down into like Rahu in the eighth, even though that's Dragon's Lair. But Dragon's Lair, I think, is referring to this thing down here. What's up here? You're going to the top up here is what you're doing. And there's something up there for you. But the universe is, is being a real tease and it doesn't want to tell you <laughs> what they're saving for you. So I think that's, that's how that is, group number three. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you next time.